Hey everybody and welcome to the bullshit party. And I know that intro is getting kinda lame, but it's the only one I got and I'm too lazy to make another one. But that aside, the reason we're here is to review the new podium vehicle, the Cheetah Classic. And in this video we're gonna be looking at its exterior, its interior, the way it customizes in Los Santos Customs, and the way it performs both before and after upgrading the performance options. And let's get the obvious thing out of the way. If you think this car looks familiar, well, yeah, it does. It's based on one of the most beloved Ferraris of all time, the Testarossa. And after a quick check to see how interactive the car is, I'm very happy to say that you can open both doors, the hood and the trunk of this one. Honestly, I was kind of surprised by this. I wasn't expecting this much interactivity. And a quick peek under the hood and uh, that's a big engine. So, yep, that's uh, definitely Italian. And for those of you who are wondering, this is a part of the sports classics car category. And for the rest of you who weren't, just pretend I didn't say that. And I have to say, the exterior of this car I'm definitely in love with. But what does the interior look like? And straight off the bat, I'm seeing contoured stitching and uh, it looks impressive. And to my best recollection, this is the only vehicle that uses this interior. All in all, I really like how the car looks from the inside, but how does it sound? Yep, uh, that's uh, definitely an Italian one. And with that, we're off to Los Santos Customs, where dreams come true, if you can afford them. <clears throat> but first, the most scientific segment in the entire video. Yep, so it has a real-wheel drive drivetrain. It's Italian, checks out. And as I try my best not to go into my offensively stereotypical Italian voice, it's time for me to give you my first impressions of the stock version of the vehicle that I'm driving right now. And it has to be said that this is my first experience with the Cheetah Classic. And so far, it's a very pleasant one. As we already established, this is a real, real drive vehicle. And the surprising part here, at least for me it is, that it handles very well. Even if you oversteer or understeer or slip up, you can just very, very easily correct it. And that's not something I can say about most cars in GTA Online. As for the power, it definitely feels powerful. And if you've seen my videos before, you know that I don't go and check out lists beforehand and classes and uh, see which car ranks where. I'm giving you my first and honest impressions. And I guess this is gonna be the first time we don't crash on our way to Los Santos Customs. Of course! In my defense, he's in my lane. What's that? That's not true? Yeah, it is. It's my video, my rules. And speaking of my video, my rules, something that I forgot to mention at the beginning is how cool the lights look. Am I the only one that thinks that we don't have enough vehicles with pop-up lights in GTA Online? And finally, we're at Los Santos Customs, and if you've seen my videos before, you know that I like to start things off with just upgrading the performance options first. This way, I won't forget anything at the end, and it allows me to... Ooh, we can change the engine block! I was gonna say, it allows me to skim over the customization options, and it's gonna basically manage my expectations for what's to come. And I have to say, for a 2017 released vehicle, I wasn't expecting to be able to change the engine block. And all in all, I see a lot of customization options, but are they gonna be worth it? Well, let's find out. Starting off with the front bumper, you can see a plethora of different options. Some are better than others, but I think there's something here for everyone. And uh, we have a rear bumper option. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next. Ooh, and we're up to the engine block cover. And I gotta say, this is a really, really nice touch, even though it's just cosmetic, and most likely you won't be able to see it anyways, it's just cool that they put it in the game. And again, this was in 2017. I can recall vehicles that were released in 2021 that didn't have any customization options. Which vehicle I hear you ask? Well, it's the Vitter, Vetter, Vettor. The new truck added to GT Online today. How do I know? I'm glad you asked. I made a video about it. And I'm gonna link it right here in case you wanna watch it after you watch this one. Let's just say it wasn't a smart idea to drink two coffees before making that video. And in case you were wondering, I'm on my third right now. And as for the subject of the video, I'm sort of impressed by the level of customization we have so far. I can't stress this enough, this vehicle was released in 2017, almost four years ago. And usually older vehicles like that don't really have good customization options. Of course you have Benny's, but that's more the exception, not the rule. And also, Benny's expensive as f Um, whoopsie daisy, I didn't say that. Yes, yes I did, but why, why? F oh yeah, three coffees. 
And as I'm midway through my mental breakdown, it's time to see the most interesting part of this vehicle's customization. And I just want to say it up front, it doesn't matter which spoiler you choose, as long as you choose a spoiler, the traction bar is gonna increase. And I'm sure most of you are gonna agree with me that being able to see the engine block through the clear window on the back is just awesome. And just like I said before about this vehicle, there's good customization here and I believe there's something here for everyone. Next up we have the suspension option, which is a bit of a weird one for me. See, even with the low suspension, which I didn't realize I hit, the car just looks funny. I don't know, that might be just me, but I think there's a pretty big wheel gap over there. And speaking of wheels and gaps, it's time to change the wheels. And after going through most of the modern wheels, this was definitely not gonna cut it for this car. They just looked out of place and it was time to change categories. So I went to the off-road category. No, no I didn't. I went to the sports category. And as I'm selecting rims and tires and earrings and stuff, it's time to show you a graph that's gonna shame you into subscribing to the channel. According to last week's video, over 80% of you are not subscribed to the channel watching right now. Are you ashamed yet? Did you learn your lesson? You're gonna subscribe? No? What are you saying, I'm powerless? Hmm, what do I have here? Who's powerless now? Haha, <laughs> I have all the power! Oh no, I spit on my mic. Anyway, I'm sure you've learned your lesson and you're gonna subscribe. Please? And we're almost at the part of the video most of you are probably waiting for. Choosing a color for this week's podium vehicle. And in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, better subscribe. And furthermore, I do polls every week asking you guys, the subscribers, what color do you want me to make the podium vehicle? And this week, the vote was very democratic. I gave you guys a choice of five different colors and you guys chose brown. Bleached brown to be exact. And I'm not saying anything guys, you voted and all and I think the almost 7,000 of you that voted, but really? Brown? Oh well, it is what it is I guess. That said, I really like the color for this car. And for the secondary color, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and then I stumbled onto the graphite and the rest as they say, is history. As for the trim color, I don't really care for that since the side windows and the rear window are all tinted. The wheels are perfect the way they are and the only thing left to do? is to get out of Los Santos Customs and see how this beast performs on the road. And here we are guys, the final product. My big Italian d What's that? I didn't say that. Oh yeah, three cups of coffee. Speaking of, look at the pop-up lights on my d I mean, car. And as far as how it behaves after going to Los Santos Customs, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag this one. First, let's talk about the thing that you're gonna notice immediately. Yep, that's right, the classic Testarossa sounds like it came from the Fast and Furious movies. It sounds like it has a DIY turbo kit installed. But that aside, I'm sure most of you are wondering about the performance. And the handling is great, but it was already great. The acceleration is noticeably better, but it was already kinda good. So what really changed here? Well, as far as I can tell, the main difference I can see between this and the stock version of the vehicle is when now I try to drift around a corner the car just doesn't let me. For some reason it has like a traction control system and it just kills the power. And the car doesn't go. And you betcha I'm blaming that for the crash. But in all seriousness, this is an almost $900,000 car. Which isn't cheap, but it's also a good vehicle. And as I said before, I'm not an Excel sheet so I'm not gonna look at charts and see how it performs against other vehicles, but I can say it probably is near the top of its class. And if you're watching this video and the week it was released, then this is the current podium vehicle. And if I have to tell you if this one is worth it or not, I can only muster out one answer. Regardless, if you're looking to race with this vehicle or just free roam and have fun with it, this car is totally worth it. Especially if you're getting it for free from the lucky wheel. And also, it's gonna make a nice collection to your garage, if you're into that. Me personally, I might need to go to Los Santos Customs beforehand, but that's my issue. And with that, I think it's time to end the video. Thank you to everybody who watched, hopefully you were at least a little bit entertained by the video and if that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or I'll find you and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Now where did I park?